Hey guys and welcome to another Pi Game tutorial here on the Coders Legacy channel. In this video we're going to take a look at the Pi Game mouse, or more specifically how Pi Game handles the mouse, how it detects its inputs, and a few other useful functions that are related to the mouse. Okay, so um, I have some basic code written over here, some basic imports, setting up the Pi Game window, and there's an FPS clock over here as well. This is something kind of handy, and I hope you guys already know about this. If you don't, there's a link in the description below. Just, just check that out, okay? It's pretty simple. Uh, this is some basic code over here, our event loop and stuff, okay? So let's just go ahead and begin, okay? So the first thing I want to do is show you how to detect whether the keys are being pressed. You know, the mouse has three main keys, okay? The left button, the right button, and the middle button. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to detect whether these three are being pressed or not. Okay, and which one is being pressed. So what we're going to do here is say make a variable called press keys and say pygame.mouse.get pressed. This gets, uh, it returns basically which keys are being pressed. So if I were to print this out, if I were to print out pressed keys, let's just see what happens. Okay. All right, look at that. Now, if I suddenly press, hold it, I just need to get that window on. There, you, if I'm pressing, you can see that the values are changing to true. Some of them are changing to true. Okay, so let's just try and make this a bit uh, easier to understand. I'll do pressed keys, or you know what, let's do something a bit, I'll do it both ways, okay? D just hang on there. I'm going to show you how to do this in many, many different ways, okay? So if pressed key is zero, okay, the left key is being pressed. Okay, else, elif, actually, pressed keys, if this is the first one, then say middle, uh, middle mouse key is being pressed. Okay, and for the third, can you guess what it is? It's two. Yep, print, what was it, right mouse key has been pressed okay so i'm just gonna go now and begin trying this out i'll click the left mouse key and there you go i'll click the right one there you go i'll click the middle one and there you go okay now notice here um well actually i'll show you something else first okay i'll do left middle and right now, this is something kind of unusual and i don't think any of you have ever seen this before well some of you probably but basically the get pressed returns three it returns three values right so with this format you can basically receive each one of these values in a different variable okay pretty handy same effect okay same thing pretty cool so what i'm going to show you now is another technique of getting input because what you've noticed currently that if i do this hold on let me just do this again if i hold down the left key we see that there's a whole bunch of, uh, like the print statement is happening like what, a uh, hundred times in a second and we don't want that, right? So what I'm going to do instead is, uh, like for instance, you want just, you want it to just execute once, right? So what I'm going to do is, if event dot type is equal to pygame dot mouse button, mouse button down, and then I'm going to do this over here. I'll just copy paste this in here, okay? And let me just format that a bit. Okay, not that much. Hold on. All right. Now I'm going to press the left and mouse, the left, middle, and right keys again with this new format. And let's see what happens. Okay, I'll hold left down. But I, I'm holding it down, but it's only being printed out once, okay? Which is what we want. Okay, so I tried out each one of them. I held down each one of them for a while and only one of them is being printed out. And the reason for this is that it's mouse button down. So it only happens once I press the mouse key. So it only happens for one frame because this event, the mouse button down event, only occurs for one frame because, you know, that's how it works. So that's why, that's why only one of these are printed out. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So you might need the first method or you, you might need the second, depending on what you're doing and what kind of effect you're really going for. 
So just like mouse button down, we have something called mouse button up as well, which triggers once you let go of a you know, mouse key. Like mouse button down gets triggered when you press down, right? When you press on it, when you click that mouse key. Mouse button up gets triggered when you let go of that key. So you, if you want to use that, then go ahead. All right. So this is basically how we detect mouse input. Now I'm going to show you something else regarding mouse movement. Okay. Uh, let's just remove that and I'm gonna go here or really let's just do it in here same thing okay I'll say mouse pause mouse mouse position pygame dot mouse dot get pause meaning get position and then I'm gonna print out the mouse position so basically what's happening here what is this saying well this is saying that once I press down on the mouse okay once I press down on the keys uh, this will print out the current position of the mouse all right so clicking down on the pi game window will now give us the coordinates okay I click over here near the top left it'll give us a basically a zero zero coordinate uh, clicking near the bottom right will give us almost the uh, max width okay which is 400 by 300 pressing near the center will give us roughly 200 by 150 so this is pretty handy if you want to, you know, find out the location of where your mouse is really clicking on the screen. Okay, it's useful for buttons as well. So, um, okay, what else should I explain? Well, I want to explain get rel now. What is get rel? Well, get rel is relative mouse movement. Okay, get position returns the position of the mouse, uh, you know, in respect to the screen. Okay, like the screen is 400 by 300, right? So it basically returns a value in that range. Get rel, on the other hand, is relative to the previous position of the mouse. Okay, this is a bit hard to explain. I'm just gonna run this and show you what happens. And you know what? I need to actually move this out of the mouse button, you know, mouse dot button down uh, event. The reason for this is that it's best if, well, hold on, let me just show you something. I'm just gonna remove this from here or just put this underneath pass, okay, like that. And I'll say over here, all right, okay, I want the mouse.getrel function to be called every frame, okay, not just when we're clicking down. Okay, you see what's happening here? It's zero, zero being printed out. Now I'm going to move my mouse into the screen and watch what happens. All right, you see, there's small, small values being printed out there, okay. What's really happening is that as I move the mouse, it's basically telling my relative position. Like I move the mouse one pixel uh, by um, one pixel to the left, so it then prints out one and zero or something like that, or zero and one. So I'm keeping it still right now. It's printing out zero zero. If I move it really fast, you'll see some really big values pop up, okay? Because uh, it's relative position. And if I go ahead and increase the FPS, so I'll be increasing the number of frames, right? So the values will also reduce in size. Okay, you can see that they're already, even though I'm moving, moving pretty fast, the values are pretty small, right? Or let's just make that a bit more noticeable. I know this is kind of weird and you're probably thinking, hey, where am I going to use this? Uh, but this is just a function, so I just thought I'd tell you guys about it, okay? So I'm just going to put that back and if you don't want to use this, you can forget about it. But let's move on to some other stuff. Alright, so enough of that. There's some other useful stuff that I want to show you, all right? Some pretty handy stuff, some uh, mini functions, you know, like visibility and stuff. So let's take a look at that. I'm just gonna first rig up a few uh, commands. So be patient while I do this. Pygame dot key button, sorry, what is that? Key down. This is for the keyboard, okay? I just want to rig up some stuff to my keyboard, okay? If event dot key is equal to pygame, what was it? I think pygame underscore, yeah, like that. Okay, alpha one. What was it? Hold on, I'll just figure this out. Um, okay, just leave that empty for now. I just want to copy paste this real quick, a bunch of times. I hate it when that happens. All right. Okay. I'm just gonna change that over there like that. Let me just run this to make sure I wrote it down correctly. Let me just press one, two, three, four. Okay, good, good. It's working. All right, what I want to show you here is some pretty handy stuff. I'm going to do pygame.mouse.setVisible to false. And over here, 
I'll change it to true. Okay, so what is this really or here? Well, just like we have stuff for the mouse, we have stuff for the keyboard as well. Okay, like key down. This is for the keyboard. Okay, so if you want to check out the video for keyboard uh, detection and stuff, go ahead. I'll, I'll include a link for that in the description below. But basically what I'm doing here, I've set up four if statements that if I press one, if I press two, if I press three, or if I press four, you know, the, these are the buttons on the keyboard. So if I press one, what's going to happen is that the mouse will be set to false. And if I press two, the mouse will be, the mouse's visibility will be set to true, which basically means that we're going to be hiding the mouse. So let me just do this over here. You see the mouse over here? You can see it now, right? Let me press one. It's hidden. Let me press two. It's back on. Okay. So pretty handy. Okay. I'm just swapping between them right now. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is show you something else. Pygame dot cursor, I think dot oh no hold on it was set cursor set cursor pi game dot uh, what was it pi game dot system cursor hand and by the way this is the pi game 2.0 feature so if you guys haven't updated yet because it came out last year in 2020 near the end of 2020 so you should go ahead and update that okay and I'll change this to arrow. Now, hold on. Let me just show you what happens. If I press three, it's going to convert to a hand, the Pygame mouse cursor. If I press four, it'll be turned back into an arrow. Okay, so here's our mouse cursor. I'm going to press three. Okay, what's wrong with that? Hold on. Slight mistake there. Okay, so I was almost right. It's pygame.mouse.setCursor. Now let's try this again. Ah, get out. All right. So I'm going to press three and there you go. It's changed into a uh, hand. Okay. This is good if you're making a game and you want to make a button or something. So you do kind of want your mouse to change a bit, right? When it's uh, pressing a button or something or when it's hovering over a button. So this is pretty useful for stuff like that. Okay. So I just rigged this up to key, you know, keyboard keys over here. But of course, you'll want to be doing something different, I guess. Like if a certain thing is happening, then hide the mouse. If a certain thing is happening, change it to uh, change it to this hand over here. So it depends on you guys. I'm just showing you how to use or how to activate this these features. So yeah, that's about it. Actually, we've covered how to get mouse input. We've covered some mouse position stuff. We've covered some extra functions like set visible and set cursor. Okay. So that's pretty much it for now and I hope you guys enjoyed the content and if you liked it and you want to see more stuff, more Pi game stuff, which there will be, make sure to subscribe as well and I'll probably see you guys in a later video.